Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the fifth week of Easter, but today is a feast day. Today is the feast day for two of the original 12 apostles. It's the feast day of St. Philip and St. James. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this particular passage focuses the spotlight on Philip out of the two that we are recognizing today for saints. Both of them are uh, very unique in and of themselves. Uh, We have Philip who was born in Bethsaida. You may remember he was one of the earlier apostles that was Uh, called by Jesus to follow him, and he in turn uh, brought Jesus to Nathanael, or actually probably more accurately brought Nathanael to Jesus. But what really uh, is so beautiful about Philip is his openness to query, his openness here in our gospel to ask Jesus a very honest question that he really wasn't tracking exactly with him as he ought or wanted to, Uh, So he just asked Jesus that simple question, Master, show us the Father. If if, uh, it says earlier than that, uh, uh, he's speaking to Thomas, by the way, Jesus says, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Well, that is a bit of a quandary that Jesus was speaking, uh, obviously, in the uh, earshot of all of the apostles, not just to Thomas alone. Uh, But he said, you know, you do know him and have seen him. And for Philip, this was a quandary. How have we seen it? Show us the Father, and that'll be enough. And so the entire uh, monologue that Jesus shares, this teaching that he shares in response to Philip's question, uh, has great theological depth and meaning. As he says, uh, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? There is this uniqueness of, uh, of relationship between the Father and the Son. And, um, uh, you know, in terms of the word, I am in the Father, uh, that's a, a very strong term to the Hebrew mind, of a relationship within a family, that uh, those who are begotten are in the parent. And so it's it's a really powerful uh, sp- kind of a source of relationship here. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. There is this closeness in connection that <clears throat> if you are seeing me, as he says, you're seeing the Father— And so believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, 
or believe the works themselves. In other words, if you if you are having trouble understanding what that is, then just look at the works that I'm doing and recognize that they have to have come from God. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. So there is this unique sense of connectedness, as I said, that, that Jesus is talking about with Philip. Now, uh, Philip was an amazing follower of Jesus. And, uh, of course, as with the other apostles, uh, was used mightily by him uh, in a number of ways uh, after the, uh, uh, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. The same with James, who is James, the son of Alphaeus. This is not the brother of uh, John, the apostle. This is James, what they call James the Less. Often they call uh, the brother of John, James the Greater, and the son of Alphaeus, that James, uh, James the Less. He actually is a cousin of Jesus and uh, ended up to be the bishop of Jerusalem uh, during uh, the early days. The Acts of the Apostles reference James in that respect. So here we have two eager apostles that we're looking at, apostles that desire to follow Jesus fully and completely in all that they say and all that they do. So as Jesus said to Philip here at the end, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. And that is something that those apostles, as they succeeded Jesus in the ministry of the church, experienced mightily, is doing greater works, not in terms of, of uh, the, uh, um, the greatness of that work. In other words, uh, Jesus, his works were greater, uh, and they continued to do the same thing, raising people from the dead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> the greatness of those works is that it's spread out among many people, spread, up, uh, spread out among, for example, the 12 apostles all doing the same works of Jesus. So it's greater in magnitude. And so how wonderful it is for us to have these words that were spoken to Philip. And then he says to Philip, whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that the father may be glorified in the son. Now, one of the things we have to remember in this particular passage is that when Jesus says, uh, whoever believes in me, he's, oh, excuse me, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do. When we say ask in my name, it's not a magic formula saying that if we add Jesus' name to anything we want, that he will do it. No, what it means is that Jesus uh, would put his signature of endorsement on what we're asking. That's what it means in my name. It means that the fullness of all that Jesus is will support what that request happens to be. So not a magic formula but a beautiful way for us to call upon our Lord to be close to us, that we might have his heart and his mind as we ask things in his name. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, if you want to know more about uh, Philip or James, I'd invite you to Go ahead and just look them up online or in a saint's book and find out uh, more about their lives and the way in which God used them powerfully in the early days of the church. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.